gotta see what I see. I am really close to being at my beloved ashram, the place where I went on a very life-changing, life-affirming pilgrimage nearly two years ago. I'm really close. This drive has felt kind of long. It's been three and a half hours. Traffic. And even this back road area, this is my favorite part, I swear there's been cars behind me <laughs> the whole time, which irritates me because people love to speed and I want to enjoy this ride. I mean, I speed and people are still on my tail usually, so, it, you know, whatever. I'm probably four miles away now, so almost there. I'm going to video a bit of this three-day retreat. Obviously, my priority is to unplug and to be present and Making a video is a little bit like the opposite of that for me. But I still want to record and capture some of this place and some of my, my journey. So I'm going to say goodbye for the moment and pick up with you again in a few. Peace. Okay, I am here and I am checked in, registered. You don't really have to check in much when you're, you're tenting, so even though I left, with plenty of time. I barely made it here before before registration was done. That's kind of scary. But I made it. Hooray. Dinner is at 6 30. It's uh 5.50-ish right now. And I really need to get my tent set up if I can. I mean I guess I don't have to, but I want to. I have to find I am in tent spot eleven this year. Two years ago, I was at uh, 27. I'm hoping 11 isn't quite as deep in the woods. I mean, it was nice, but it was a long walk, <laughs> like up the hill to go to the bathroom. All right, I'm gonna let you see where I'm going. So here's the cafe up here that I love, and there's a dude playing guitar. Come along. That is a dormitory I've stayed at before, back in the old day, the first time I came, which was about five years ago. Okay, I'll go around here. Ah, I think this is, these are where the, yeah, the bathhouses are. That's good. kind of out in the open <laughs> more than than I'd like but it'll be fine it's close to the bathhouse that's good I'll show you there's the bathhouse in the parking lot Time to get my house built. It is, it's about 10 after 9, and I'm sitting in a quiet area, little courtyard area, and there are hundreds of uh, lightning bugs everywhere. It's pretty awesome. There's someone softly drumming at the tree across the way from me. I brought my blanket and I'm gonna hopefully see the moon. I hope she is in a part of the sky that is clear.
Good morning. Day one on my pilgrimage 2.0. I never could see the moon last night. I thought about walking around and looking for it, but I honestly, I just didn't. It's not that I didn't feel safe, but I just didn't feel comfortable with walking around. There's, I ran into a lot of people yesterday. Not people I know, but um, one of the things I'm looking forward to and hoping to get out of this trip is some solitude. When I say unplugging, I really mean unplugging from society and from the fast-paced world where I live. Um, even though I'm in suburbia, I live in a really busy city, a terribly busy area. Anywho, it was 1 a.m. before I could sleep very well. I got a um, air mattress. <laughs> way better than the little tiny half inch thing I slept on two years ago because that hurt <laughs> and I'm, I'm older now than I was then I thought I'd show you my my little home in the woods it's much cozier than last time I got my little window closed right now these little string lights made a big difference uh, they make a big difference. These are those little battery operated tea lights. You can't have fire or flame here, which is fine. I don't need it. These are, are awesome for a little low light. And this, my dears, is the number one most wonderful thing I've purchased in a long time. And it is a rechargeable fan. And I have, I'm going to take it up to my car to recharge again. It did not run out of battery. I actually got cold, <laughs> which is amazing. It is so freaking hot. <laughs> it's not hot right now. It's probably 68 right now. But it'll be up to like 91, 92. So there's a pile of stuff over here. <laughs> I brewed a ton of coffee before I left. This is an old jar. And I brewed a ton of coffee and brought my soy milk and sweetener and stuff over there. I keep a little cooler right outside. Peekaboo. Good morning. There's a little cooler. I'm going to put this stuff back in here for tomorrow morning. Um, and there were lots of cans of Monster in there, some sugar-free energy drinks. I may or may not even drink them. I like to have them on standby because uh, caffeine. Caffeine is everything sometimes. That's a rarity, hearing an airplane. And it's a little one, you can tell. You don't hear a whole lot of anything. I will say, I sat in the little courtyard last night when I filmed the dark part of this, and uh, there were like two dogs in the distance. They sounded like hellhounds. If you ever watch Supernatural, I was like, rut row. I haven't made a plan yet, and I feel a little scattered about that. I need to find my little printout of when the meditations and when the yoga and stuff are taking place. Pretty much I think I know when the food is. I think breakfast is at seven. And it is right now 6.06. I'm pretty sure there's a meditation going on. I haven't gone to anything yet. Hopefully after today I can be a little more planned out and get, get that meditation on. They have meditation many times a day, so. I'll do it. I think this first one lasts an hour and a half, and that's hell for me right now. I have a hard time making it 10 to 15 minutes, and once, I think last year, or the last time I was here, I sat down and didn't realize. I think I thought it would be 30 minutes. It was an hour and a half, and I was in the front of the room, so even getting up to walk out of there, People can hear you breathe. Yeah. 
oh, is in hell. One thing I love about this place is the wildlife. And yesterday, I saw, um, I was trying to count the, the animals. Big fat toad, it was big. Um, two deer, a mother and a baby. And if I hadn't been crashing through the woods with my big fat feet, I wouldn't have scared them off. But by the time I saw them, uh, they were all already like, you crazy loud, and they, they ran. A million, um, a million lightning bugs last night. I'm gonna try to see the deer again. I get so excited over that. I'm not very deep in the woods this time. I don't get to choose where I am. And part of me thinks I should turn my, my tent, turn my tent around to face the back, so I just see woods instead of face the front. I might do that, but turning my tent, it's full of stuff right now, so I'm afraid I'm gonna rip the bottom. Whatever, whatever. If you ever do go on a little tent trip, I recommend the little string lights. These are, these are cozy. I got my, my big overhead light, which I don't use ever. And like I said, these little things are really great. This is kind of boring, so I'm gonna let you go. I'll talk to you later. Have a good day. I just finished breakfast. I have a horrible habit as a teacher. I eat everything in 15 minutes or less, and that's taking my time. <laughs> oh well. I also am not eating huge amounts because I'd like to jumpstart a little bit of a healthy weight loss journey. I had about two thirds cup of oatmeal and I cut up apple on it with cinnamon and a little glass of orange juice. Nothing crazy. And most of the food they grow here and they prepare here with love. You can taste the love. It's delish. I'll see if I can take a little stroll around here in a second so you can see it in the daylight. I saw the cutest little thing. Walking by the dormitory, there was a hook with hula hoops. <laughs> I don't know if uh, Blue Knight watches my videos, but made me think of him with his mad hooping skills. Somebody's flossing. I could kick myself so freaking hard. Last night I missed, I didn't know it was happening. There was a full moon chant. Oh my Lord, I would've given anything, but I didn't know about it till 10 minutes ago. Oh well. Maybe in the future. Okay, I'm gonna stroll and maybe take some footage. See ya. Suki no ba
seems like, which is basically distracted and multitasking and go, 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 but never really 100% accomplish anything. That first night, I almost couldn't sleep. I was so stressed out. Um, the night before, I had had a pretty bad nightmare that someone broke into the tent and tried to hurt me. And sort of looked at it like, uh-oh, I hope that's not a premonition, holy crap, and pushed through and just decided, I don't think anything will happen, but if it does, oh well. So I had a very horrible sleep the first night. The second night was much better, but then last night, my last evening there, best night of sleep I've had. I slept like I do at home. It is so incredible what this place does for me. The last time I went, was the first week of my sobriety and what a wonderful decision that was to go it changed everything and I'm still still trucking to this day with the sobriety and that's that's a pretty big deal people so this time I didn't have a certain thing I was trying to do other than truly unplug from the rat race and from the constant stress and from life. And yeah, I just got out of school. I'm two weeks into my summer vacation. You would think, oh, easy, easy peasy, but it's not for me. In real life, uh, when I try to meditate, five to 10 minutes most at the max. And I lose my mind think about what I need to do and blah 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 and here or at the ashram you don't have a choice you can't wiggle around you can't be distracted because other people are in the room and they can hear you you have to push through and they're 30 minute meditations I mean I didn't do the hour hour and a half one like two years ago because I'm still not there I would need more than three days to, to get to that point but 
I meditated on Friday three times, three half hour sessions of meditation. One of them I did on my own back in my tent and I laid out and I put stones on me and I listened to this awesome like recording is a chakra cleansing meditation. That was an hour and a half on Friday of meditation. And then three meals that are vegan primarily, those healthy, well-balanced, organic, grown there meals were, oh my gosh, they were good. Oh my Lord. I made myself slow down to eat it and I made myself say a blessing before I ate. And I love the fact that they don't make you do that. But everybody, just about, you watch people, they sit down and they do a little prayer. They close their eyes, sometimes they put their hand on their bowl, sometimes they fold their hands and, and they say a prayer. So going forward, I'm going to insist on prayer before eating for myself, for Poochie. We always do say our prayers at um, dinner time, but they're just sort of cheesy. I'm gonna introduce to him some of these new ones. Here's the last thing I think I wanna say. I don't know if I've mentioned her already, but there is a an elder there, she's a Swami. They call her Madaji, which means mother. I fell in love with her the first time I went four years ago. Her energy, when you're with her, you know you're in the presence of the divine. She is literally in her 90s. I love her so much. And every year that I've gone, I've wanted to talk to her or say something to her, but I literally am so a fangirl that I'm too shy to say anything to her. I had ample opportunities yesterday. I feel like um, spirit or source kept giving me opportunities and I kept burning those opportunities and not doing it. I mean like three times she and I came across each other in a small place and I just smiled really big and I would hold the door for her or I would do something and I wanted to talk to her but I was I didn't I choked and I knew today was my last chance and so during the lunch there's always the 30 minutes of silence while she does a reading I sat right in front of her at the little table which tables on the floor and I sat right in front of her and I looked at her and I listened to her. I actually sneaked a recording and I'll probably try to insert that. And I swore to myself, I promised myself and I was ready. I was like, when, she, when she's done, I'm going up there and I'm gonna talk to her. And I sort of was thinking of what I wanted to say, but then I just realized, I said, I'm just gonna speak from the heart. So when she was finished, before I had a chance to talk myself out of it, I, I got up and I walked over to her and she's she's sitting in a chair and one thing I've learned from teaching and from having kids, um, you squat down to be on someone's level rather than stand up. It's just weird to like look down at somebody when you're talking. So I squatted down. I finally just told her, this is the fourth time I've come here. I've always been too shy to talk to you, but I wanted to say that I am so thankful for you thank you so much for everything you've done. And I think I said, this place has changed my life, has literally changed my life in so many ways. You're my favorite part of this place. And during your meditations, they make me cry. They touch something in me. And I said, ever since the first time I was here, when I was here for a program, so we got to spend a lot of time there with her. And I said, in the, mor the first morning, when you played the violin, to wake us up and it came echoing through the dorm I said that was one of the best moments of my life and I have been searching online trying to find a single violin playing Edelweiss and I can't find it I said I want to find that song so I can set it for an alarm to wake up like that and she was so gracious and so warm and she said, come by my office. I'll be there until two. Does your phone record? And I said, yes. And she said, come by and I'll play it for you.
so much. You're welcome. So, may I give a little hug? Yes. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much. You mean so much to me. Well, thank you for all your work. You're so welcome. And it was the best moment. It means so much. You can't waste these opportunities. I don't know how many more times I'll get to see her. Maybe never. I don't. It took me two years since the last time I was there. So I don't. You don't know what tomorrow holds. Say what you want to say today. Do what you want to do today. And especially if you want to tell someone how you feel about them. Don't burn the day, Dave Matthews. <laughs> do you guys know that song, Pig? You should listen to that song. That song comes to me when I meditate so much, especially the line when he says, is it not enough? This blessed sip of life, is it not enough? Staring down at the ground while praying for more from up above, you greedy little pig. Is this not enough? This blessed sip of life, is it not enough staring down at the ground? Or then complain and pray for more from above, you greedy little thing. And let me just say, the day is so much longer in a good way and more meaningful and fuller when you, you don't watch a damn bit of TV. You don't listen to anything on the radio. You don't even listen to podcasts, y'all. I read books that had paper. I read a whole book about Reiki, and then I'm loving a book I bought forever ago, Wheels of Life, I believe it is, about your chakras. I did a little self-assessment, and I knew my heart chakra was in bad shape. It's been hurt a lot over the years, but it turns out also my first and second chakras are kind of, they're the, they're the two that have the most issues. I got really healthy upper chakras. I live up in my head. I need to ground more. I need to do so much more. That's another video maybe, possibly, for another time. But here's what I'm doing, and I think I've started this sentence two or three times. I deleted Facebook off my phone. I'll still be on Facebook here and there, but I'm, it's off my phone. I'm not gonna be a slave to that shit. I deleted Instagram off my phone. I'll probably keep YouTube on my phone because I don't really watch YouTube much during the day unless I see somebody who I love has dropped something. Amber, pretty much Amber. And lately, Shane Dawson. <laughs> Thanks, Amber, you got me into Shane Dawson. I'm insane over him. I'm gonna disengage a bit from media. I'm not gonna go back to eating garbage. Sorry, Triscuit. Y'all are going to notice a, a, a plummet in your sails and wonder what in the heck happened over there in the eastern area. Yeah, that was me. Sorry. I had to finally eat something else. I know everybody can't take three days off from their life and go sleep in the woods and go spend hours every day or many half hours um, meditating and doing their hatha yoga and being inspired by Grandmother Willow that's who she is. She is Grandmother Willow. Pocahontas is a horrible movie, but I love Grandmother Willow, and I love the freaking Colors of the Wind song. That, I mean, that makes me cry my freaking face off. Okay, let me tell you something else, y'all. We're going like, we're just going. There were some hot yogis. Oh my lord. I thought, I thought, I'm just not interested in this stuff. I guess I'm old now. And yeah, I'm old, but Delicious. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, the yogi's there. Oh. Now, the sad part is, you know, they're all in their 20s probably, which so is my oldest child, so that's gross. But I saw a dude my age who was freaking hot. The people who live there have a vibe. Mm. Mm. Spiritualism is sexy. Okay, I'm gonna go. Talk to you soon. Peace.